It's an interesting question what we mean by education on neuroscience. I would view the field, it's a research field, as being part of the broader learning, learning sciences. The learning sciences originally comprised an interaction between psychology, education and computer science. That's a, ton of, a field of understanding how m machines learn. And really since the, the late 1990s there's been an increasing understanding of brain function driven predominantly by technological advances in, in brain imaging. And educational neuroscience is, is a contribution of our understanding of neural mechanisms of learning to the, uh, the broader learning sciences. Now, educational neuroscience has been some debate about that name. Uh, it portrays it as a field which is a branch of neuroscience. And uh, kind of foregrounding neuroscience in that way isn't, isn't necessarily universally uh, agreed with. For instance, in America, they call the field mind, brain, and, and education as an attempt to portray it quite rightly as the interaction between those three different fields. So one question is, how much neuroscience do teachers need to know? Do they need to be engaging with neuroscience uh, literature, the latest papers on coming from brain imaging or genetics, for example? I would argue no. I think teachers need to uh, have a, a gist of an understanding about how the brain works and to get a sense of how that uh, influences how children are likely to respond in the classroom. Uh, I think the broader picture is that, that teachers need to be uh, critical, they need to be evidence driven and I would like as, as an ambition to persuade them of the importance of being interested in mechanism. Now teachers understanding of mechanism I don't expect that to be at the level of neurons. Uh, I think of one of me, my colleagues uh, Paul Howard Jones characterizes learning, if you could get to this higher level, in terms of a, a, a cycle of uh, engage, engaged students' attention, their interest, of construct knowledge through teaching methods, through understanding the specific knowledge relevant to the domain, and then consolidation of ways to ensure that information stays there and is accessible and can be used flexibly. Now, you can look at the neuroscience. I have to say the neuroscience of learning is, is some of the most complicated there is. I, I'm going to wave my hand a bit and say that, that depending on, you, on how you count them, there are about eight different learning systems in the brain that are continuously interacting and interplaying with each other. From the point of view of the, the classroom teacher, you just want to see the products of that and think about uh, how you can maximize the interaction between those eight different systems. So there is this negotiation about trying to understand mechanism and then to think about the user, how you can convey the best knowledge to use that information.